I have two portraits that have really strong Manchester United links and I'd like to talk you through just how I came to take them. I love football. Based in the Midlands, I'm a lifelong Aston Villa fan and yet there are two portraits in my portfolio that have strong links to Manchester United Football Club. So why is that? Well, it all starts with my days as a press photographer and being based in the Midlands, I became aware of a very special footballer. So special in fact, that many consider him to be the most complete footballer that ever lived. His name was Duncan Edwards and along with his best friend Bobby Charlton, he played for Manchester United and England. He was one of the legendary Busby Babes, a name given to a truly inspirational side playing under manager Matt Busby in the 1950s. The Munich air disaster occurred on the 6th of February 1958. Flight 609 crashed on takeoff at Munich airport. On the plane was the Manchester United team, as well as supporters and journalists. 23 of the 44 on board died, and one of those was Duncan Edwards. To this day, there's a clock on the Manchester United ground, Old Trafford, and it stopped at 3.03, the exact time of the crash. Now, Duncan was from a market town in the Midlands called Dudley, and that's where he was laid to rest. Football fans from around the world travelled to the cemetery at Queen's Cross Dudley to pay their respects to possibly the greatest player the world has ever seen. They visit his statue in the marketplace and the pilgrims often make the short trip to St Francis Church in the town to see the stained glass windows in the church which show pictures of Duncan and the Man U badge. How many people knew that there was a church in England with stained glass windows depicting football? Working in Dudley as a young photographer I was very aware of Duncan Edwards and the Duncan Edwards story and that terrible crash. And after many assignments on the subject, I often met family members, including Duncan's mother, Sarah Edwards. Once on the anniversary of the crash, I drove to Manchester with Mrs. Edwards to Old Trafford to photograph her by the Munich clock at 3.03. It was a very moving day and I'll always remember it. Now for the portrait. A pub in Dudley had closed for refurbishment and it decided to reinvent itself with photos and memorabilia of Duncan. In fact, it even decided to change its name to the Duncan Edwards. His mother Sarah had agreed to cut the ribbon and open the pub. I did all the usual press pics that you'd do, but after the opening, I asked Sarah if she would like a few moments to herself. With a drink in hand, I led her to a quiet spot and she sat under a portrait of her beloved son and there she stayed for a few minutes to herself. I'd already measured the light beforehand so I knew the exposure and I just took a couple of frames before I left the room. It's one of my favourite portraits. I look at it now and I can feel the connection between them. I can feel the moment. Knowing Mrs Edwards also meant that I had my fair share of meetings with Duncan's best friend and Manchester United teammate, Bobby Charlton. Now, Sir Bobby Charlton, of course. Sir Bobby told me almost every single time that I met him that Duncan was without doubt the best player he had ever played with. And whenever anything in Dudley was being done to honour Duncan, Sir Bobby would be there to do the honours. And he looked out for Duncan's mum, Sarah, too. She told me that whenever he was travelling in the Midlands, he always called on her for a cup of tea. And every year on Mothering Sunday, Sir Bobby sent her flowers. That's real friendship, isn't it? So it's no surprise that my second portrait is of Sir Bobby. He was in Dudley to open a display of Duncan's memorabilia. His shirts, his England caps, cups, trophies... My intention that day was to shoot a portrait with Duncan in it somehow, behind a photograph, maybe a team shirt. 
But when I met Sir Bobby that day, he was quiet, poignant, reflective even. Straight away, I was reminded of that portrait of Sarah years earlier. So I changed my plan. I didn't use all the lights I'd taken. I used a single light and a black background. I shot the image with him staring right into the lens from really close quarters. I was maybe three feet away from his face. He must have liked the portrait though, because later that year, he asked to use it as the cover photo in his autobiography, My Life in Football. The point is, I went in with one idea of what I wanted to do, but after assessing the mood and the situation that day, I changed my mind. That was the right picture to take that day. I'm sure of it. So that's the story of how a Villa fan came to have such a close relationship with Manchester United. And you can't change your team, everybody knows that. Your allegiance to a football team is imprinted in your DNA from the moment you step into the ground on your first match as a kid. I remember my Villa versus Leeds it was, halt end, standing room only in those days. I couldn't see a thing, never saw the match, but there I was, and that made me Villa from that day on. When the scores come in at the weekend, obviously after checking Villa, I always have a quick look out for Man U. And I think of the lovely Mrs Edwards, who bore an uncanny resemblance, I have to say, to my own nan. And I think of her famous footballing son. And I think of what might have been. <laughs>